Hello, I'm Greg Rodke, Rodke Mods, and welcome to episode two of my Mac Oddware series. Today's episode uh, is going to be filmed in tandem with episode five of season four of the Power PC series because I'm building a Power Mac 9700 Power Express out of some G3 parts and what I have right here. But what I have right here is still sold in the box and it is definitely a piece of Mac Oddware, so we're filming it both together. What we have right here is the Accelerate Carrier Ziff. And this allows you to put any Ziff card that would have been for a Power Mac G3 or a Power Mac Blue and White or even a Power Mac Yikes G4. Um, any of these Ziff CPUs will fit on this and make the 9600 or any other Mac that has this CPU slot in it work with this and it makes it uh, cheaper to upgrade the CPU with a G4 or a G3. What I have in my hand right here is my Sonic 500 Ziff card. Uh, this is a uh, 7410, which I don't know if it's going to be compatible with this, and if it's not, we'll go to a Yikes G4, uh, 400 megahertz, and try to overclock it to 450. Uh, but I have this in box. I actually have two of these. I have one that doesn't come with that didn't come with the box And I need to keep this box and all the instructions because I don't know how the other one works um, But I thought we'd open this today on camera and show you how the uh, Accelerate carrier ZIF works and how to set it up on one of these and like I said, I'm filming this in tandem so um, It's gonna be interesting how I'm more piece this all together. But anyway, um, what the heck, let's get to it. Okay, I'm probably going to say this also in the PowerPC series episode, but I'm sure you're probably saying something like, Greg, you said you were going to stop filming in your dining room on your dining room table. And yeah, I was, but my studio is finally getting rewired, and there's wires literally hanging out of all the walls, and half the lights don't work now. So, yeah, we're back in the dining room. Anyway, here is the Accelerate Carrier Ziff adapter. Um, here is the box, still sealed. Really neat little device here. Here is all the info on the back, everything it will work with. Uh, it says G4 needs 8.6 or higher. This, I think, is running 8.5, but that, I think, is running OS 9. I don't remember which version, uh, but um, we're probably moving that drive over to that to test this anyway. Uh, so, it still will work, but it says it needs uh, at least 8.6 for a G4. And this is probably something it needs more like 9 anyway, because this is a later chip than um, what it, this expects. But still, this is everything on the back. There's the side, and there's the bottom. It's just a sticker. So we're going to open this once I figure out which way it opens. Looks like it opens from the top. So I'm going to quickly cut this and we'll start filming it again after I cut it. Okay, so we got to cut open. We can peel this plastic back now. Like so. Pull that back. And then pull this tab out. And open it up. This lifts out. Like so, there's nothing else in that box. So I think this you know, flips around. And then the side just kind of pops open. Oh, I don't believe it's supposed to do it that way, but okay. Here is the documentation, which we would probably have to read. Um, what else we have here? Important inbox notice. You must install the Accelerate uh, Speed Control software, blah, blah, blah. 
blah, blah, blah. Removable motherboard caches. Um, this is also a problem with the 9600. Um, the early 9600s and all these systems had the cache on the, uh, the logic board instead of on the CPU card like this has. There's the memory cache right there. Okay, if you don't remove those, it automatically defaults to the slow onboard cache, which will cause a whole lot of problems. But this tells you how everything works. We will need to set the jumpers to mostly on. Um, that's good to know. So yeah, because uh, that's a 500, but this is also supposed to auto clock, but I don't think it will on this card. So we're going to have to do that. It's good to know. In fact, that translates to, I probably won't have to read anything. Um, as long as I read this. So, um, we might have to do on board two from what, I don't, I don't know. But anyway, this is interesting reading material here. What else do we have in this box here? What is this? Oh, all of the jumper settings. I am glad that I bought one in the box because I would never have gotten the other one I have to work. <laughs> Ah, uh, let's see here. Thermal grease caution, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, okay. Here is the card itself. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, whatever this is has rotted quite badly. What is this? Some kind of rubber bag. And it didn't survive being in the box for... Let's see here, 21 years roughly. I think this is 2000, so 20 years. Didn't survive 20 years. But here is all the, ooh. Yeah, all that stuff needs to, uh, <laughs> ooh. Yeah, we're not using that thermal paste, but we will need the um, heat sink. And look, a sticker for no random reason, because why do you need that sticker? But uh, whatever. This is one of those gaskets for the uh, um, capacitors. And that appears to be it. But yeah, that rotted, whatever that is. Hopefully it wasn't needed. So we'll just shove all this back in the box. And we'll slit the bag open really quick. And we'll come back. Okay, so we've got the bag slit open. It looks like it's in a Ziploc. I've um, tried to open this once before, but my dogs messed everything up. But now we can unroll it here and uh, pull the card out. There we go. There is the Zip card. It's interesting. Uh, my other one doesn't have this bracket. It probably will make it a lot easier to push it in and pull it out. But yeah, we just take this and stick it on here. The thing is with the Sonic cards, they stick up higher, uh, which I couldn't figure out why it wasn't fitting into my uh, blue and white when I had it in there very well. The heat sink did not want to go on. It's because it sits up higher, uh, which could be a problem because there is like no room in there for extra clearance. So we'll see if we can get it to fit. If not, we'll definitely have to use a yikes. But we're going to try to stick this together and uh, I'll be right back after I set this up on a tripod. Okay guys, so we have the card here. Um, we're just going to wing it. Uh, for now, I have in, uh, read some of the instructions here and um, I also found the installed disc in the manual. Um, it's nice, but yeah, um, let's open up what's in the thermal grease bag here. We have a disposable wrist strap. Nice. I've never actually seen a disposable one. It's interesting. Don't need that though. We'll need the heat sink, which my other card didn't come with, but um, Luckily, I um, actually have a, another card, uh, I mean another heat sink that will fit it. 
and uh, it's not going to be a size issue on the other system I need it for. But this also uh, comes with a screwdriver, I don't know why. Um, go figure. It's got some ancient 20 year old thermal grease in it we're not going to be using. And a popsicle stick uh, or tongue dis depressor to uh, spread everything. I don't think we're going to need to spread it, but I, I guess we can use it. I mean, it's here, right? So we'll, we'll use it. Um, we're not going to need the sticker because there, there's no point. So basically, the only thing I have to do is open it like this. Like that. And then I've got to line up the uh, teeth and slide it in like so and then just flip it in like that and we have the car built it's that simple but now we have to also play with the jumpers to make sure everything's at the right speed um, and I also have to install the software and this heat sink's probably going to be a pain since this card sits up higher, but we might be able to get it to fit on. So, let's uh, put the thermal paste on it. The 7410 G4 die is about one half the size of the 7400 G4 die, so it takes a lot less thermal paste. So we got that nice and evenly spread. Now we just take the heat sink, we line it up like that, and since this is a G4, although it's still going to probably have enough pressure because it's higher, uh, let's see here, it's going to want to be like right there. So we just set this on here, line it up on the clips here. And now I push down with all the force I can to get it on. It's, a, it's, it's a, annoying that this chip sits so much higher. Um, I can't. I can't get it on. <laughs> I'm going to have to redo the thermal paste now because I've spread it everywhere. I'll be right back. Okay, let's try this once again. There we go. Now we have the heat sink installed. Now I just have to play what jumper do I need to use uh, for it. Uh, so uh, I don't know if these jumpers are on the logic board or what. I don't know if it is or not. Uh, we'll figure that out. But right now we need the jumpers that are on the card itself, I believe. Uh, carrier ZIF settings. Here are all the jumpers. We have to flip all those digits. So, I don't know which way is up. On is down. So, I need them to be on. Let's flip them all off, like so, as we can see here. We need one, two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, and twelve. And now we are set for 500. So now I can now film the other video uh, until we install this. So yeah, uh, pretty fun. But um, before we do that, I do want to quickly go over what's in here. Um, it's literally just a manual. 
Here is the install disc and the accelerate sticker. I will be using the Accelerate sticker on the other system that I'm going to be building. Not on this one because, well, we put a Sonic G4 on this card. And this system already has powered by Sonic on the front of it from an uh, earlier upgrade card it had before I got it. So we're, we're just going to say it's a Sonic card. And it is technically a Sonic card. It just happens to be an Accelerate card. Uh, card thing now but still um <laughs> it's a sonic card it even says sonic tech right there so what do we have in this right here mm -hmm. it's just instructions on how to get everything set up which we'll have to probably follow um it is interesting how that works how to prepare the ziff card when oriented, blah, 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 blah. Huh. Interesting. But yeah, this, uh, sorry. This thing just uh, has a bunch of interesting little things, like uh, how to set up the accelerate cards and stuff, how to uh, set up the thermal donut that we're not, and we didn't use. They call it a donut. That's nice to know. And uh, the instructions that I need to follow for this is, I think, in, in the 40s. Page 49. Installing in a 9600. Pretty cool. Shows you every step, including how to reset the CUDA and all that stuff. Pretty neat. So yeah, that's how you do that. And then it shows you how to set it up in a clone. Um, we will actually be setting one of these up in a clone in the future. I have a um, uh, UMAX uh, Super Mac S900 that's going to get one of these upgrade cards once I get a working hard drive in it. So it's going to be a fun video in the future. But now... I can start filming the other video and then we'll come back to this for this video. So see you guys then. Okay guys, so we are now in a supported um, operating system for the G4. And um, I'm not really sure if this will work now that I'm reading the back of the box uh, because this is a Sonic card, it's not a supported card. It says any ZIF card, but in on the back of the box it says any accelerate ziff card or any apple ziff card it doesn't mention any other brand so i don't know if this is going to work but we're going to install the accelerate um stuff and see what happens so i'll eject the drive and we'll go on Let's see what happens. See here, we need the mock carrier. Uh, then again, it's also a mock speed ziff, a carrier ziff. Uh, I need to read some instructions here. I'll be right back. Okay, the instructions aren't helping a whole lot. I'm going to cast that as the carrier ziff one. And it doesn't double click on that mouse. Okay, there we go. For G4 CPUs, it's going to be a G4. AC3 owners click here. I don't have a clue why that would be for a carrier, but okay. Okay. I know, shut up. 
Shut up. It won't shut up. Okay. Um, until a valid cash is not be enabled, we'll have. Okay. 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 Well, let's see what the serial number is. Okay. There is the serial number we will need. So neat. Will you just shut up? It's really annoying. Okay. Actually, first, what's in the custom install? Just uninstall. It's, it's pretty simple then. Install. Continue. Now it wants me to restart it. Restart. All right, we'll come back when it's restarted. Ignore this in the background right here. I couldn't get the screen to turn on when it rebooted, um, and I thought it was the computer itself. It wasn't, and I forced restarted it a few times. But uh, it's complaining now about the uh, serial number, so hit OK. I know, shut up. Go away, it won't go away. It's lovely. Well, anyway, there's that error message. Um, I've got to get this thing to actually boot up now. I'll be right back. Okay, we are now booted in. We'll go to the Accelerate folder. It is a small window. There we go. We need to go to that. Mock speed control is nowhere to be found. Okay. Uh, I'm getting sick and tired of reading instructions. Uh, maybe it's a control panel. It might be a control panel. Yeah, here it is. Mock speed control. Okay, this is where we put in the serial number. So um, I've got to plug in my USB keyboard again because uh, I disconnected it trying to figure out why this thing wasn't showing the screen. I'll be right back. Okay, so we've got the serial number plugged in there. Let's hit OK. And here we go. It's currently saying the 604E. And um, once we get the new card in, it should just all work out. It's just everything that we have here. So, cool. I will now tilt this thing on its side and uh, we'll film putting the card in. Okay guys, so we're walking over to the system. I've already disconnected all the stuff that has to be up in the top. And there is the original 604E. Pop that out. That is what the 604E looks like. If you want a more detailed look at it, I did a live stream up over there. If you want to check that out, I actually showed you what this looked like, but I just don't want to show you that today in this video because it's a bit of a pain to get the heat sink off. But this is a 604E, all right? So we'll set this right here real quick. I want you to see the difference between that and the Accelerate ZIF card. It's a, a big difference. Very, very interesting. So, we will plug the Accelerate ZIF card in right here. And there we go. It's installed. And that's what it looks like. So, I'm going to put all this back together. Then I'll show you what this looks like with that on here. So, yeah. All right. And that is what the G4 looks like in there as we can see it's all compressed in there and ready i just gotta clip these down and we are ready to hook this thing back up and see if it actually works with a sonic card installed into it or find out i forgot to hit the cuda switch 
uh, which uh, resets the board um, information on the CPU. It's that red button right there, so I've got to hold that in for five seconds before we uh, actually boot it up. All right, it's time to see if this Sonic card does actually work, so let's hit the power button. It bonged. That's a good sign. There we go. That's another good sign. It's not. Um, I think it's trying to boot into the SCSI drive now. And we'll probably have to disconnect it. Uh, because it should auto default to the SCSI after you reset the CUDA, which I forgot. Great. But we do have good signs that it's working. But now I've got to pry the case back open. Yippee. Okay, I disconnected the SCSI drive. Make sure this monitor is actually trying to find the connection. There it goes. There it goes. Now it's booting into the right drive. That quantum fireball is really loud. Ooh, neat. It's not exactly a speed demon with 64 megs of RAM, but A, it's booting. Don't know what the error message is for. Here we go. Clock. Yeah, I know. I know. Stop, stop reminding me. Go away. Let's see here. A system profiler. Here we go. We got the G4 running at 450. It's not right, but um, I'll go with it. 450. It's a Sonic 500, but it's running it. Um, and it might just be because the bus speed's slower. Um, I will have to probably play with the to toggles a bit more to get it to work right, if that's the problem. I, it might just be the Sonic yelling at the card trying to manage its own self. Uh, because the Sonnet is actually designed to set itself at any jumper speed, so uh, it should be running at 500. But we are running a G4 in a 9600. We have a Power Express uh, running. And uh, let's look at the accelerate control panel here. We have a 7410 running at 450 megahertz. Still not right, but I'm not going to complain right now. It's running it with um, with a Sonic card in it. That's, that's really neat. Backside cache, neat. That is cool. That is cool. So yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video on this Mac Oddware here. This is a really interesting card, and I am glad that I actually have been able to show you guys how it's, it's working. It's, it's really neat to see how this thing works. Uh, this is such a weird card, but hey, it's the cheapest way to put a G4, uh, especially a Sonic G4, into a uh, Power Mac uh, 9600 or any system that uses the 50 um, megahertz um, um, CPU bus, which is um, that slot instead of a socket. So yeah, it's pretty neat. I'm, I'm very happy with that. And uh, it seems to work great. So <laughs> it's cool. Anyway, guys, um, 
that's the end of today's video. Don't forget, I do now have a Patreon if you'd like to help support me. Um, there'll be a link at the end of the video and also in the description below. And you'll get to see these videos a day early if you want to. Uh, if you uh, come and join me. And if you don't, that's, that's fine too. Uh, as long as you're watching my videos, um, it helps me make ad revenue. And that's plenty enough for me. But if you want to go the extra mile, I greatly appreciate it. Anyway, so that's the end of today's video, and thank you guys for watching. This has been a Rock K Mods video. So, bonus material, guys. I just finished talking to Des Roth a few hours ago, and he explained to me why this is only seeing the 500 as a 450. And that has, has to do with the uh, multiplier that's on the Sonic card. It only can go up to a max of nine times. And uh, it's a self-setting multiplier. No matter what jumper setting I set it at, it will always run at 450. And any bus speed that's below 66, this is a 50 uh, megahertz, uh, will just max out the uh, multiplier until um, it, it will just run at the max multiplier it can run. So at 50 megahertz, it will run at 450. I figure at like 33 megahertz, if there's a slocket, and this is the other name for adapters like this is slocket, uh, just like uh, slot one to um, um, PGA uh, 370 with the uh, Pentium 3s, slocket. Well, this is the Mac equivalent of it. And uh, he explained to me that um, because it's maxing the uh, multiplier out at 50, um, megahertz on the um, bus speed it runs at 450 it will never run at 500 and I'm not complaining because at 450 this thing will run uh, slightly cooler and uh, the 7410 is still more efficient than the 7400 and also the uh, um, temperature uh, on the thing is uh, it's going to say something like uh, where is it it, it's not even telling me the temperature now, uh, I don't think. But anyway, there it is now. Four Celsius is kind of low because uh, they don't have calibrated um, therm uh, thermal um, thermometers in them, um, uh, temperature sensors. Uh, so it doesn't know what to do with the 7410, where the 7400 would tell you. But that's not a big deal. It's still going to run cooler than the 7400 ever would. So that's not a big issue at all. And I apologize for my dogs making noise in the background. I asked them for one minute. <sighs> anyway, so yeah, that's why this isn't running at the right speed, but I'm not complaining because it's still running at a very good speed. Um, this is probably the fastest G4 you'll ever be able to get into one of these, and it's still a good G4 speed, and I'm happy with it. So yeah, thank you Des Roth for um, clarifying that, and um, I hope you guys enjoyed the bonus material. Here's another interesting bit of um, to this odd word here is, see this piece right here? This is the data going between all the controller chips and stuff that piece going through there it's got sound effects if you unmute it i wondered what that mute button was for and now i know that's odd so i'm actually going to be filming two videos at once i'm also in, um, filming the episode five of the Power PC series, um, season four. And um, I need to film them both together because I'm doing a, um, what is it, a power, a power, yeah.